Number 48, integrated concepts. The axis of Earth makes a 23.5 degree angle with a direction perpendicular to the plane of Earth's orbit. As shown in figure 10.41, this axis precesses, making one complete rotation in 25,780 years. Letter A, calculate the change in angular momentum in half uh, this time. All right. Um, so in this particular, let's just take a look at the picture at the top. Basically, we're going to treat the angular momentums as vectors, as they, sh uh, as they showed in the picture, or as shown in the picture up here. And what we are tasked to do, all right, is to find the change in the angular momentum in half this time. So a, a precession means that the this axis moves from this point and rotates around this axis. Well, I should say this axis, right? It rotates around that central axis, and it takes... Uh, 25,780 years to do so. So what we need to find is we need to find the change in angular momentum in half the amount of time, okay? Uh, so we are looking for then this vector. Now, in order to find this vector, instead of finding that as, a, as our equilateral triangle, which we could do, I'm gonna break this up into uh, two triangles, all right? Here's the first one, right? So if I, if I can find the initial uh, angular momentum, then I can find this change value at the top, right? This half, I could call it, of delta L. And then to find the full value at the top, just multiply it by two, all right? So that should be fairly straightforward here. So why don't we first, um, so let's set this up, okay? That the, um, so let, let's first set this up, that the change in angular uh, momentum will be equal to the initial angular momentum, right, multiplied then uh, by, remember, we have to find this vector, all right, so if we're thinking about, let me actually, one second, sorry guys, let, let me let me give this a variable, let me call this x at the top, all right, so to find x, just let, let's think about simple sine, cosine, tangent stuff, right, to find x, what will we need to know in terms of this right triangle, well, here's the angle, we're looking for the opposite side, here's the hypotenuse, so we can simply do sine, right? So sine of the angle is gonna be equal to the opposite side of x over the uh, angular momentum. So we're looking for x, so let's just solve that right off the bat. So here x will be equal to the angular momentum multiplied by the sine of theta, okay? All right, so now how do we find angular momentum? Well, it gives us the formula down here, right? It's really moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity. So now I can break this up into the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity multiplied by the sine of our theta. Okay, so now where do we go from here? Well, now what we can do is we can find the uh, moment of inertia. Okay, I got the formula down here for the solid sphere. So this is going to be 2 multiplied by the mass of the rotating object multiplied by the radius of the rotating object all divided by 5 multiplied then by the angular velocity, right? Now think about how do we know the angular velocity of the Earth? Well, you know it, right? It's the rotation of the Earth. How long does it take to make one revolution of the Earth on its own axis? It takes a day, right? So if it takes one day, all right, I could say, I should say it this, it takes, it's one revolution per day. So if I had to convert that into radians per second, right, this would be one revolution over two pi radian. We got 24, excuse me, we have uh, in one day, there's 24 hours, and then in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds, okay? So basically, that's what we're going to plug in for our omega, and then multiplied by the sine of the angle, all right? So now we can just start plugging in the value. So this is 2 multiplied by the mass of the Earth, so that's at the top, 5.972 times 10 to the 24th, multiplied by the radius, so 6.378 multiplied by 10 to the 6th, and that whole thing is squared, this whole thing over five, and then times our omega value. So remember that's basically gonna be two pi over 24 times 3600, and then multiply by the sine of our angle of 23.5 degrees. So throw this all in into the calculator. So we got two times 5.972 times 10 to the 24th times 6.378 times 10 to the sixth squared, Divide that by five, and then let's take that, multiply it by now two pi, all divided by 24 times 3,600, 
and then that result multiplied by sine of 23.5. And that would be our x value now, right? It comes out to be about 2.817. So that's x. So 2.818 or so times 10 to the 33rd. And now, right, what do we really need? Well, we don't want to know the x. We want to know the full delta L up here. So we just have to take this value and multiply it by 2. Okay, easy peasy here. So just take that and multiply it by 2. And now we're going to have our delta L value. All right. So why don't we do that? Uh, so just take that answer, multiply it by 2. So it comes out to be about 5.64 or so. 5.64 times 10 raised to the 33rd. Times 10 raised to the 33rd. Great. So now this is uh, units kilogram meters squared per second. All right. All right, so let's erase all this stuff now. La di da. La di da. Letter B. So what is the average torque producing this change in angular momentum? So uh, now for letter B, all right, uh, let's think of the analogy uh, of forces, all right, and impulse, right? So remember, um, and change in momentum. Remember that we had the formula uh, of impulse, okay? That is essentially the uh, force multiplied by the change in time of which that force is applied is equal to the change in momentum, right? This was the linear case, okay? That goes, this is just back to um, whatever chapter it was. This is back a few chapters now, maybe it was chapter six. And what I can now do is use all the analogs for rotation, right, to figure out the formula if, in case you don't know it. Remember, because the rotational dynamics are analogous to the linear dynamics here, so the, for, the analog to force is torque, time is time, and then the analog to the linear momentum is going to be the angular momentum. So look at this, we have now our formula. And it, what we're asked for is the average torque, so obviously just solve this thing for torque, and this becomes change in uh, angular momentum over change in time. So now all we need to do is just calculate this, right? So Let's see, so now it asks, so what is the average torque producing this change in angular momentum? Okay, so we found the change in angular momentum. All right, goes uh, over half the amount of time. So now what we realize is that this is the, so this is 5.64 times 10 to the 33rd, all divided now by the change in time over which this change in angular momentum occurred. And this change in angular momentum occurred in half the amount of time that they told us. All right. So we now need, but remember, we need seconds down here. So now we have to take the 25,780 uh, years, convert that into seconds. All right. So every uh, one year, right, there's 365 days. And then I'm going to run out of space. I can already see it. So then for every day there's 24 hours, then for every hour, there's 3,600 seconds, all right? So just this whole math on the bottom, okay? So it's gonna be 25,780 times then 365, oops, 365 times 24 times 3,600. And remember that's all divided by two because it's half the time. We gotta keep the time consistent with that change in momentum. So let's just find, uh, solve this. So we'll take that answer from part A, divide it now by, in parentheses, 25,780, uh, multiplied by 365, by 24, by 3,600, divide it by two, and what do we get? We get about 1.39 or so. Oops. So we get one 1.39 times 10 raised to the 22 times 10 raised to the 22, and this would be in terms of Newton meter, okay? That's the unit for, for torque. All right, great, so that takes care of letter B now. So let's just move this on up. That looks good, so that's letter B. And we'll do some more racing. 
And let's see what we got for letter C. All right, so letter C now, it says if this torque, if this torque were created by a single force, it is not, uh, acting at the most effective point on the equator, what would its magnitude be? All right, so this one's not that bad. It's, uh, we're gonna take an aerial view of the Earth. Well, aerial view, it's spherical, so it depends on what perspective. Um, here's the North Pole. You're looking down from the North Pole, okay? You're on top of the Earth, right up here, and you're looking down, all right? So uh, here's the North Pole, and this outer perimeter is obviously the equator. So if this torque that we found here, all right, was produced by the most effective point on the equator, right, it would be the furthest distance from that axis of rotation, okay, would be this particular force. Doesn't matter if you draw the force up or down. I'm not worried about magnitude. I'm not worried about signs. I'm worried about magnitudes here. So I realize that um, if I apply a force at the equator, and we do know this radius, right? That's just the radius of the Earth. So that's six, oops, 6.378 times 10 to the sixth meters. Okay, that looked like 10 to the G. Times 10 to the sixth meters. We know that if a force acts at a distance relative to an axis of rotation, we do produce a torque. Uh, and we do know that formula, right? Torque is equal to force multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm. So to solve for the force here, this is just very simple. It's the torque divided by the perpendicular lever arm. We know the torque. That's what they. That's what we just calculated. One point three nine times ten to the twenty second, all divided then by the perpendicular lever arm, which is the radius. So six point three six point three seven eight times ten raised to the sixth. And what do we get for our force now? So take the answer prior and divide it by six point three seven eight times 10 to the sixth. And we get a value of about 2.17 times 10 to the 15, and that is Newton's. So that's the answer to part C. All right. So guys, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it very much. That concludes this chapter. Thank goodness. And see you in the next chapter. Take care.